this is my student support system keep watching keep learning hello good morning welcome to my student support system in today's class we are going to discuss iv infusion this lecture is in english and if you want to study in hindi just click on i button and you will get link of hindi lecture or you can directly visit to channel my student support system so what is iv infusion iv infusion is a process of administering large amount of fluids or medication into the vein through an infusion pump this one or by gravity this one what are the fluids which we use for iv infusion the main fluids which we use are uh, classified into three categories hypotonic fluids isotonic fluids and hypertonic fluids hypotonic fluid is the solution that contain fewer dissolved particles such as salt and electrolytes then found in the normal cells or blood means their concentration is less than blood and examples are 0.333 means 33 on uh, saline or sodium chloride and 0.25 saline or sodium chloride isotonic solution the solutions that contain the same concentration of the dissolved material such as salt and electrolytes then as found in the normal cell or blood it means the concentration is equal example are 5% dextrose solution or d5 0.9% sodium chloride or normal saline or rl ringer selected solution that contains multiple electrolytes hypertonic solution the solutions having higher concentration of dissolved particles such as salt and other electrolytes then as found in the normal cell or blood means the it is more concentrated than the blood and example are dns means 5% dextrose plus normal saline and 5% dextrose plus half saline that is 0.45 saline or 10% dextrose solution these are main solutions which we use for iv infusion apart from this many injections are also available in 100 ml bottles uh, or packets they are can also be used as infusion how we calculate the drops for regulating the flow rate means how many drops should go per minute and we uh, count the drops in the chamber that we will see in the iv set or drip set so calculating the drops per minute is very simple we can use this formula it is gtt per minute or we can say drops per minute uh, gtt means gutta actually it is a latin word which is used for drops here we take volume in ml and we multiply it by drop factor and drop factor is different for every iv set and it is written by the manufacturer that what is the drop factor whether it is micro drip or drip set or usual drip set so you will find a drop factor then time means how many minutes this fluid should be utilized or infused we can take example that if we are infusing 100 ml of uh, 1000 ml of fluid in 10 hours then how many drop should go per minute and here drop factor is 60 that is normal drip set the drop factor for normal drip set is 60 so we can calculate it like this volume is 1000 ml we will multiply by drop factor then 10 hours means multiplied by 60 so 600 minutes and when we calculate answer will be 100 drop per minute so we will set accordingly now we come to the preparation of articles what articles we need for this procedure a tray contains iv solutions as prescribed by the physician 
then non allergic tape to fix the uh, cannula iv administration set this one it is also known as uh, iv drip set medication card for the patient electronic infusion pump if we are using pump otherwise we need, do not need to take this one tourniquet one tourniquet we will take label for iv container and drip set and uh, cannula three uh, labels we will need sterile gloves iv cannula this one or butterfly needle short extension tubing sometime we use uh, multiple drip set one uh, in one cannula so we take these extensions these are known as short extension tubings end caps caps are there alcohol wipes to uh, prepare the skin then sterile cotton swabs can also be taken kidney tree and paper bag specimen tubes for collecting blood samples if needed 2 ml and 5 ml syringes macintosh and towel splint with bandages to stabilize the hand or the body part and separately iv stand or pour now steps of procedure always keep rights of drug of administration the medication uh, rights are there so keep in mind that rights while starting the iv infusion because it is also medication identify the client correctly right client right dose right uh, medication these all rights you should keep in your mind and if you want to study what are those rights you can go to my channel and uh, watch the video that i have prepared as administration of medications explain the procedure to the client provide privacy by curtains or wrappers wash hand and then prepare iv drip and tubings how you will prepare them first of all place the iv stand near the client or to the side in which hand in, or in, on which side you are going to prick left hand or right hand accordingly you will set your iv pole then take the bottle uh, that normally 500 uh, ml bottles are coming Uh, are used for iv infusion so you will take the bottle and then insert the uh, iv drip set in twisting manner like this okay and then you will hang the bottle on the pole then the drip chamber you should squeeze so that it is filled half okay and then you run you can uh, Uh, open the clamp allow the fluid to run through the tube and air is removed and it is filled with the fluid this is known as priming of the iv set so we prime the uh, iv drip set during this procedure we should maintain the sterility especially at the endings of the tubings after fluid is filled in the tube close the clamp and recap the end of the tube and hang on the pole so this is the system this is iv set you will insert this portion by twisting movement like this into the bottle and then half fill the chamber and prime the iv drip set and then recap it and hang on the drip set so in this way we have prepared our uh, iv drip set as well as fluid now we may make a time strip okay label we will label the time and date for starting the infusion and we apply it on the iv fluid container also apply a label on the tubing reflecting the day and date for starting and for next change also depending upon hospital's policy 
Place the client in low fowler or spine position in the bed. Place protective making tooth and towel under the patient's arm. Open the short extension tubing package and attach the end caps and insert normal saline with syringe and prime it. Means it air should be removed and whole extension tubings are also filled with normal saline. Now we will go to the next step. What is next step? We will palpate the patient's arm so that we can find the uh, best vein for vein infection. Select appropriate cannula depending upon the age of the client and size of the vein. So these are different cannulas which are available with the color coding. This is 14G, 16G, 18G, 20G, 22G and 24G. Normally this is used for infants, these are used for children and these can be used for adult. Now we apply the tourniquet 3 to 4 inches above the venipuncture site that we have selected to obstruct the blood flow, venous blood flow and distend the vein. Now put on the gloves, clean the skin using alcohol wipes, take out cannula and hold in dominate hand. Mostly dominate hand is uh, right hand. So you will hold the cannula like this. So this is the system. You will hold it like this. Your thumb should press here. Otherwise the needle will go back. Okay. So this is the proper position of holding the cannula. And just before piercing, you will remove the cap. Okay. And now your non-dominate hand will hold the patient's arm below and taut the skin okay so that vein is stabilized avoid touching the prepared site okay because that should be sterile and ask the client to remain uh, still while we are performing the vein puncture pierce the skin gently holding the cannula by hub in your dominate hand like this at 10 to 15 degree angle and insert the catheter directly over the vein or from the side of vein and advance the cannula in the vein till blood is seen at the hub it means at this point of time the cannula is in the vein you can see the blood here it means you have successfully pierced the vein. When blood returns through the lumen of the needle or in the flashback chamber, so this is flashback chamber, then advance the device into the vein until the hub is reached to the venipuncture site while holding the needle back. Okay, the needle stillet should be held back and that cannula should be advanced so that the needle should not prick again the vein and go outside. The vein. Now we will release the tourney. Quickly remove the protective cap from the extension tubing and attach to the cannula while withdrawing the needle and pressing the vein with the thumb of another hand here so that avoid leakage of the blood. Now you have attached the extension tubings like this. So tubings are attached in the to the cannula and then IV drip set is also attached but before attaching IV drip set we will flush with the syringe and uh, using the syringe you will flush the normal saline and we will see there is infiltration or leakage if it is okay then we will attach IV drip set and start the infusion label the cannula also for the date and time and type of the size of the catheter and needle used for the infusion then open the claim on the IV drip set or administration set. Set the flow rate as you have already calculated. Then remove the articles to their proper place. 
wash hands and record the procedure in nurse's notes. So in this way you can complete your procedure and you should return frequently to check the site for infiltration or if whether cannula is out or not. Thank you students for watching such videos you can subscribe the channel you can like Facebook page and for making your notes you can visit mynursingstudents.blogspot.com here you will get your notes you can follow me on Twitter Instagram and join Facebook group nursing notes thank you have a nice day